As some of you know, in the year 2005, I was very invested in Naruto, watched every episode on Jetix, but eventually the channel started showing reruns. I was very frustrated with this and decided to take my interest to the internet. As I surfed the web looking at Naruto content, I would often notice those, you know those ads that would appear on the side of the website you're on? Well, one of them was titled Bleach. But besides being a cleaning product, what the hell is a bleach? Ah, who cares? If it wasn't Naruto, then I didn't give a shit. Then a few months later, I start seeing bleach related stuff in Google Images, comment sections, and of course, in my recommended videos. One particular video piqued my interest, so I caved and clicked on Bleach Lesbian Scene. And just FYI, there was actually no lesbian scene, and instead an emotional conversation between two female characters with one of them being wet and naked on top of the other, so. <clears throat> After watching that, I soon came to the conclusion that it was necessary to try different anime and expand my horizons. I mean, who knows? This show could actually be good. 14 episodes in, and I thought it was okay. The tone was definitely a little darker compared to Naruto. The lighting was more dim, and it was depicted in a more modern setting. It felt more tragic, and although this is incredibly minor, I especially love how each episode makes an effort to change the style of the episode number and the to be continued stuff. That's that's just that's that's really cool. I like it. Flash forward to the Soul Society arc, and I was f***ing hooked. Everything just got so much more interesting. We were introduced to a new world, new characters, watching old characters develop. It was all just one big adventure. This arc still remains one of my favorite arcs in anime. I mean, it's got a simple objective. Infiltrate and rescue a friend. It's been done to death a million times, but my god was an exciting ride. The more I watched, the more I became invested in all these characters and their lives. I wanted to learn about their origins, how powerful are they, what motivates them, why do they have such different ideals. I'm telling you, this arc felt like a freaking video game, introducing a huge roster full of a variety of characters with different beliefs, different backgrounds, and different personalities that would often clash with one another. I was also fascinated in the concept, what started off as gods of death going around reaping souls, transformed into freaking Dragon Ball Z Sword Edition. Your sword can evolve to a new level which can alter its form or even the wielder? Sign me up! And it was also nice to know that the Shinigami were not completely useless without their swords, since they got those uh, Kido spells. I especially liked the twist they did with the villain originally as this kind, compassionate guy, to a conniving badass. This arc was great in introducing and establishing a new world, how it works, the squads and its rankings, character backstories, the fights, the twists, all that shit was great. Now I'm gonna get a little negative. After the Soul Society arc ended, I found that my excitement for this series began to slowly decline, mainly because of the Bounce arc, which I had no idea was filler at the time, but even with the Aranka arc, sure, it had some good moments, with new characters, introducing those uh, hollow hybrid looking ass people, we got the main character trying to learn more from his hollow side. Shit was getting intense. Then a female companion gets taken away, and a team gonna go get her back. Hmm. That, uh... That sounds awfully familiar. Unfortunately, Hueco Mundo and Soul Society shared more or less the same structure, and as a result, it failed to capture that spark I had with the last one. I still felt Hueco Mundo still remained somewhat decent and entertaining for one reason, and one reason alone. The fights. Some of these battles were absolutely amazing. It was interesting to see how some Shinigami had to improvise in battle, or do something that's out of their comfort zone. It was something fresh and different, not having to always rely on Bankai to solve a problem, but instead trying alternative fighting techniques, using your intelligence, or simply giving in to desperation. It all had me on the edge of my seat. They had a few cool antagonists here and there, got some glimpses into their stories, but let's be real here, it was the fights that kept this arc afloat. We now jump to Fake Karakura Town, which was quite a mixed bag. This arc gave some Shinigami with less screen time a chance to shine, and I must say that most of their individual battles were nicely handled. It gave us a look into their mentality when it comes to fighting and their own rules that they follow. We've been so used to watching a character fighting in the name of duty, to protect others, or hell, simply just for the fun of it. But we begin to learn that some characters get absolutely no enjoyment from doing the things they do. Some fearing their power in the battlefield, while others become cold and ruthless in battle. A few other obscure characters have their moment in the sun, while others do not. The visors show up, and that's when things start getting a little, uh, a little messy. Let's start off with the main antagonist, Aizen. 
Now, I could be wrong, but I believe this was the arc to make Aizen into a meme. I understand that most villains are often depicted as this cool, calm dude with overwhelming strength and vast knowledge, but Aizen really takes the freaking cake with this. This guy just cannot seem to f*** up. The cards are always in his favour, everything is always going according to his plan. This entire area is full of captain and lieutenant level people, some of which have holification control, and they just can't seem to take out this one guy. Now this is where Aizen's sword comes into play. Kyoka Suigetsu, the ability to control the five senses to the point where it can make the target misinterpret another person's form, shape, mass, feel, and smell to be in enemies. It doesn't even matter if you're aware that you're being hypnotized because its influence is just too strong. Now I see why Kubo never revealed Aizen's Bankai. Because there is nothing more you can do with that thing. He made this Shikai so freaking powerful that having a Bankai on top of it would be redundant! Now don't get me wrong guys. I understand that Aizen is very well loved in the community, and I am one of them. He's an absolute badass, so I enjoy his memes, but from a story perspective, it's just so bland and repetitive. Good guys attack Aizen, it does little effect, more characters join the fight, Aizen is caught by surprise, could there be hope for our heroes? Oh no, it was all part of his plan. Rinse and repeat, rinse and repeat, rinse and repeat. The Espada. For being one of the strongest, these guys were pretty underwhelming. Let's start with number 1, Coyote Stark. Love his design, I like his laid back personality and his interactions with his uh, partner, but his power is a real letdown. We have seen some of the lower Espada do some real impressive shit, particularly with Ilkiora. That guy even has a second transformation. Once you compare those feats, for being the top Espada, Stark was pretty meh. Baragon. He starts off okay, his design is pretty cool, and his aging power is somewhat decent. He actually felt like a threat out of the three. Shame he didn't last too long. And lastly, Halibo. I like how cool and composed she is. She's got a great pair of p p personality. Everything about her looks good. So what's her power? Oh, to manipulate water. Neat. So because of this, how about we make the water girl fight against the ice guy? Hmm. This is so exciting. Also, by the way, Kensei went Bankai and clashed with Wonderwise. Then we flash forward to a few episodes later and we see Wonderwise is now fighting Yamamoto. So what the hell happened? Did Kensei lose? Did he run away? Did he transition into another anime? I have so many questions! The main character. I think Ichigo is one of the most boring main characters I have ever seen in anime. It's funny because when I first started the show, he was actually my favourite character. A high school delinquent always getting into fights, being judged negatively because of his natural hair colour, and always wearing a scowl on his face. But we find out that underneath that tough exterior, he's actually a very caring and empathetic guy, who values his friends and family. We eventually learn that Ichigo used to be a very happy and cheerful child back when his mother was alive. I think this was one of the things I related to him the most, as I too am a mama's boy. Whenever he would feel sad or experience pain, the moment his mother appeared, all that sadness would simply wash away. Now this is where the protection complex comes into play. Yes, it adds to his character, but I feel that it also simplified him as well. He's protective of his mom, his baby sisters, his friends, I get it. But now, that's all he's about. And as he travels further into different worlds, I feel like everything that made him interesting slowly diminishes. He has the personality of a wet mop. Hey Ichigo, you got any hobbies? What's your favourite food? You got any, uh... You got any goals in life? So anyways, after making the majority of the cast look like fodder, we now head towards the arc's climax. Oh, I get it. That's a pretty nice twist. Aizen was portrayed as the good guy, and Gin was portrayed as the conniving little rat. But really, it was the other way around. Still think Dean deserved a better end though. The main character finally gets his shit together. The final battle begins, main character wins, credits roll. Or so we thought. The next story arc would be the one to either be appreciated or hated by fans. The Fullbring arc. 
after like what 17 months what kind of time skip is that why not two years uh, anyways after some time had passed since the eyes in battle we're back in the human world we're then introduced to these random nobodies that possess these full bring powers at this point in time ichigo has no shinigami powers at all but is informed that he can get them back so we go through these bland yet kind of creative training stages but let's be real here we all just wanted to see the shinigami return and they do near the end of the arc this arc gets a lot of hate and i totally understand why but there are some things that I did like. For instance, I appreciate the fact that abilities like Chad were further explained. I kind of like how things were getting a little psychological with Skishima, and it felt a little nostalgic watching Ichigo go through his boring shitty life. When this arc ended, a lot of people were feeling pretty bummed out with Bleach. Some were losing interest, some dropped the manga, hell, some people dropped the series altogether. And to add insult to injury, it was announced that the anime would end early. <laughs> No. The future of Bleach was looking pretty... bleak. <laughs> Despite the ups and downs with this show, I still continued reading it, hoping for it to regain its spark. I've been following this show for so many years, and to just discard it like that? Hell no. I'm sure Koopa will think of something. And then... It happened.